Hello, and welcome back to Rails Quest. Today we're going to talk about a new gem that's come out from the team at 37 Signals, specifically that comes from the Hotwired team here, and it is called Hotwired Spark. So in today's video, we are going to take a look at this gem, talk about why you might want to use it. We talked about before on the channel a gem that is very similar. It's called Hotwire Live Reload. This is different. This comes straight from the team that built Hotwire. So we're going to take a look at what advantages it might afford someone who would like to check out this gem. And maybe it'll fit for your use case. And we're going to talk about one important use case that actually affects me that is still a work in progress and it does not work. So if you use your app in a certain way, this gem may not be quite ready for you yet. That's enough in the way of introduction. Let's take a look at this gem. So here's the page for the Hotwire Spark gem. You can see it's got a very simple installation step. You simply put the gem line in there and run bundle. And it's as it says, that's it. So let's take a look real quick at how it works. The system will listen for different kinds of changes. So it's going to have specific actions that it takes based on changes to different types of resources for your application. So HTML may be treated differently from CSS, which is treated differently from stimulus controllers. Notice that it says stimulus controllers. That implies that it has first class support for stimulus controllers. It also has first class support for import maps and it allows for smoother updates. It actually works better if you're using import maps. So Hotwired Spark, it's already capturing my attention because I am really enamored later with the no build approach and it looks like this dovetails very nicely with the no build approach and it goes into a little bit more detail about how it morphs the page for HTML changes for CSS changes it will fetch and reload the CSS and for stimulus controller changes it fetches the stimulus controller and reloads all the controllers on the page so that handles the life cycle of the stimulus controller in a clean way very nice very nice this is all with without refreshing the page manually. So that means you don't run into some annoyances that you might remember if you have tried to use gems like this in the past, where maybe you've entered some data into a form, but you forgot to change the color of something, or you forgot to change another little bit of the UI. Well, if you had some sort of live reload that was more heavy handed, it would not be able to handle that gracefully, and it would get rid of whatever you may have entered into the form or state that you had on the page that you cared about. So it'll be interesting to take a look at what that means in practice. And it mentions JavaScript bundling support too, so you're not left out in that situation either. So you can see there's just a few options for configuration and we're not gonna worry about that right now. So right now we are in our app, that is the demo app. And I'm gonna refresh my memory on what exactly is available. So all that stuff up there is boilerplate. Down here, we have the actual routes. So let's take a look at the demos. We have rate limit demo, and we have CSS zero showcase. So that's the current state of our Rails application that we're demonstrating here. So let's take a look at the Hotwire Live Reload. What does it look like to replace Hotwire Live Reload in your app with Hotwire Wire spark. So we're going to go ahead and bundle install, restart Rails. Oh, and Rails crashed. Undefined method hotwire live reload for an instance of. Okay, so there's some remaining stuff that we need to clean up from the hotwire live reload gem. So let's take a look at that line in our config application.rb, line 27. Well, that's clearly an option for a gem that we don't have installed anymore. So let's go ahead and comment that out as well. And restart the server. So now we've got another artifact from the live reload gem. And the reason I'm live coding this is because I want you to see the friction involved in removing the live reload gem. Why is that important? That's important because it shows that I had to make several changes to this application in order to get that hotwire live reload gem to work, which is not necessarily a bad thing. There were small changes. As you saw, it was just two or three things that I needed to delete or comment out and I'm back to a working app. But you'll notice the contrast with the Hotwire Spark gem is you just install it and it just works. It hooks right into your application without needing to add this any of this boilerplate, however small it might have been. So let's go back and remove those lines and we have successfully switched to Hotwire Spark. 
What does that mean for us? Let's take a look. And I'm gonna go ahead, I've not saved this file yet, so I'm going to show both the browser and the editor at the same time. Now I'm going to hit save, and there it is, in real time. Maybe I'll show in the future, as I'm, I'm planning to use this gem as my default, especially once I get that issue that I mentioned before ironed out. But I would love to be able to show you changes to the CSS. Let's just go ahead and do that. I think the JavaScript change is gonna have to wait for another video but let's add a bogus class here. I'm going to trust that that added correctly. And we're going to go to the bottom here and add bogus color red. And just like that, it changed the color to red. Oh, here's another thing I can do. I just can't help myself. Okay, so this value is bogus. I'm going to change it to change it to Rails Quest. And now you can see it reloaded the state of the CSS without changing or affecting any of the other state on the page. Super cool, super convenient. I love it. Now let's get to the gotcha. I'll just show you the issue that we are currently working on. I'm using the Puma dev tool, which I've got a video about that's up on my YouTube channel, and you can check it out. But the Puma dev tool runs my Rails app for me directly using Puma. This is a problem with the Hotwire Spark gem, because the Hotwire Spark gem detects that you're running the Rails server command. It does not detect other scenarios, at least not that one which I've tested, which is running with Puma dev or even running with Puma directly. So we've got a couple options already on the table here and I'm going to be chasing this down. It's not super important. It's not on my list of priorities to get figured out, but I think it is definitely something that I'm planning to chase down over time and get fixed so that it works automatically with Puma Dev. You have a really nice integration there automatically. But I just wanted to call that out in case you use other tools other than just running the simple Rails server with the Rails server command. And that is really my only reservation so far with this tool. Hotwire Spark has been incredible. I've used it with a little local hacking to make it work with my Puma Dev setup, and I love it so far. Anyway, with that said, I hope you give this a try. If you do, please reach out and tell me how it went. Tell me if you'd like to see anything else on the channel related to this or otherwise. Leave a comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, have a blessed week. I'll see you next time.